When we talk about noise, the following two terms often come up. Differential mode noise and common mode noise. But what does that actually mean? And what are the differences between the two? Let us perhaps first clarify the question what a differential mode signal is. A differential mode current is exactly what we have been learning since high school. The current flows into the circuit on one side and out on the other side. The desired signal is the difference between the two potentials referred to ground. So far, we haven't had any noise. However, in switched mode power supplies, for example, high currents are switched very fast and the signal may look something like this. These small overshoots contribute nothing to the useful signal and thus it is called noise. We want to get rid of this noise and it can lead to a malfunction or interference. Furthermore, regulations exist that set limits for such harmonics. So it is our task to remove this differential mode noise. For this, we can use a simple LC filter. Since we want to keep both lines in balance, we use an inductor in the return path as well and divide the initial value by two. Because we connect the capacitor across both lines, we call this filtering element X capacitor. But using filters is just one way to mitigate differential mode noise. We could also improve the PCB layer to reduce loop errors, but more on this in a later video. Now let's talk about common mode problems, which are somewhat different and often more difficult to control. You have these especially if you have longer connection lines then these act like antennas. Imagine we place a cell phone next to these long connection lines. High frequency interference can then couple into our circuitry. This noise current then flows in common mode and disturbs our DOT, the device under test. This works because our source and load are located near the chassis. So common mode problems result from parasitic elements in the circuitry. Even if these parasitic capacitances were only 10 picofarads in value, a 1 GHz noise signal would see an impedance of only 16 ohms. Thus, it is possible to measure common mode interference voltages in the microvolt range. In reality, however, the cell phone is not the main contributor to common mode noise. The circuit itself radiates and interferes with neighboring circuits, coupled via closely spaced cables or transmission lines. It is mainly digital circuits with high switching frequencies that disturb neighboring analog circuits, because antennas always work in both directions. They can transmit and receive, so you always have to consider both aspects, emission and immunity. Now, of course, the main question remains. What can we do against common mode noise? We will clarify this question in the next video.